Okay. We did it. Well, Hello? You did it. Well, this is our slight echo. Yeah, I have no idea why. You know, I can turn this down a little bit. Can everybody hear us? Can anybody hear us? <laughs> is there anybody out there? There's still a slight echo. Oh, yeah, but I gotta hear a little bit of it. So hear the alerts. Okay, so anyway, unless somebody says differently, we're live! <laughs> and, uh, so Sunday, huh? That echo's annoying. How about now? Keep talking so you can I'm tell. Talk. Yeah, you... this is better. This is better. I barely hear the echo now. Okay, so back Sunday uh, for another round of Townsville Tussle. Townsfolk Tussle. Town Tussle. Town Tussle. Town Tussle. Town Tussle. Yeah. Townsfolk Tussle. Where, uh... I know it's not Tussle. It's Tussle. Yeah. But it's Townsfolk Tussle. Townsfolk Tussle. We're doing the Townsfolk Tussle. So we played, uh, last time we got together. Um, if there's anybody watching, please confirm that this is going live. <laughs> and working. There we go. Thanks, Scum. <laughs> Hello, uh, Scum. How are you? So we're playing uh, round two of the first game. Um, last time we played against... Who was we, we played with last time? It was Bork, Bork, right? Bork Dovis. Bork Dovis. And we won. Uh, barely. Uh, we lost. Uh, well. But since it was the first game, we gave it a, another go because... We gave ourselves a chance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now, today, we're going to be fighting Peppin' Milk Frog. So, we'll go over his stats and everything here in a minute and, and the problems we're going to be running into there. But, uh, yeah, so we were off last week. We took a little trip. Our yes. yearly uh, yes. um, Geep Con, a good enough adventure party con. This year was uh, a small one. We went back to our core group for multiple reasons, mainly because we didn't schedule the thing until really late and had limited options on where we could go but uh it was fun just to get back to a small group of seven and mainly our D, &D group and one extra one extra yeah. yeah so um but we didn't play any D, &D when we were there we played board games well, we played and, 10 candles which yeah. is a different kind of rpg which um made me a little it made it hard for me to get to sleep that night yeah and we'll yeah. talk about that here in a second <laughs> we played a couple other board games what, what board games did we play oh around? goodness um well let's see we I played tyrant of the underdark yeah you played risk risk 20 something 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 yeah i can pull it up here um so we played uh i played hive and yinch and i taught our friend heather how to play slay the spire Got her, got her hooked on that. The loop? Yes, we looped. Um, and we just won with an asterisk. Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu? <laughs> yes, which we lost. Just lost. <laughs> just we were lost. very close. Yeah, to we were that. very close. Yeah, it was risk. Well, no, we only 10. had two We only had two uh, gates closed. We were, we were really not that close on that. We, we lost. Yeah, we played risk 2210. I haven't played volume, risk in years. Volume is low. Oh, Elena volume had lunch low. on the stove. What are you eating for lunch, Elena? Our voice volume, is that what you mean? <laughs> Why are you on the stove? <laughs> Let me know, does that sound better? If not, we're gonna have to turn the mic up a little bit because I'm almost maxed out on the mic. Um, or is the music too loud? Let me know. Everything sort of reset. Right before, right when we went live, and yeah, uh, that was we weird. lost some video, got messed up, and a bunch of stuff changed right at the last minute. So I didn't have an opportunity to check everything second time around. So yeah, let us know. And uh, and we play test my game. You did that. Starfinder yeah. Mountain about uh, it's a one versus many game where the many are the goblins, and basically you're seeing the game through their point of view. The adventurers are coming into their mountain, their cave, and they're defending themselves. Uh, must just be me, oh, I think on mobile. Oh, okay, well, okay. Let, me, let me turn this down. Must, be, your, must be her computer speakers. I maxed it out, okay, all right. <clears throat> we played 
Ten, Quix, Llama, yeah. Yinch, and Tell Telestrations After right. Dark. We played Telestrations a couple times and Code Names. Oh, I didn't write that one down. Code Names? Code Names After Dark. Yeah. He did, uh, so we had an uneven number. We had seven people, so he did the uh, spy master for both teams. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you, if you ever have seven people or an odd number of people you want to play with, it, it's it's not easy being the spy master for both teams. You have to... I made sure I gave every effort to both teams to try to be able to help them win. I think I did a pretty good job of that. Yeah, I you didn't, did. I didn't uh, play any favorites. And uh, it was tough because you have to think about balance along with the clues and with telestrations after dark which are not telestrations uh code names after dark it's there was a controversy there where we talked a little bit about whether it's easier or harder to do the dirty version of code names and uh i think some people think it would be easier right because you could say penis seven but I think Three of those difficult. are for one team and four is for the other team, so you really can't say that. The more you're yes. in a genre of right. something, yeah. the harder I think it is to be able to separate. Yes, because one clues. word goes with way too many clues. Right. The assassin's really tough. To Everything's avoid. a penis, that's right. That's right. So, yeah, I, but we had a good time. Um, overall, we went hiking. Oh, we did. Uh, we went hiking for one day, and whoo, buddy. It is time to lose weight. That's get in shape. It's an understatement. Right? We need to get in shape. What we did on our hiking was nothing like we used to be nothing. able to do. Nothing, and it wore us out. It was pretty, pretty wore out. Uh, then we did some cookouts. We got to sit out by the campfire mm -hmm. and just chat, which we haven't done Listen with to the people frogs. for a long time. Very, um, very loud frogs. <laughs> yep, and uh, just basically relax. Yeah. And it was a nice, relaxing four days. Yep. And then we ended it with a game of Ten Candles, which was an RPG. I don't want to say horror, but essentially horror RPG. Horror themed, yeah. And uh, it I was mean, really fun. Um, things were coming down at us. The, the sky went dark. The sun was gone. There's no stars. Everything's just dark. And there are things in the dark. Them. The, the, the them. The unique thing about this role-playing game is the players pretty much create the environment or the create the game as you go along. So as yeah. the, I was the GM and essentially for the GM I need to sort of set the environment, uh, you know, run the NPCs and sort of say what's going on. But but he uh, didn't have to run the NPCs for very long because we tended to kill them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so what you basically do is you have 10 candles and as you're playing through the, the game, uh, the GM will call for some kind of contest roll if somebody says they want to do something. And uh, <clears throat> they roll these 10 dice, and if they get a 6 on any of them, they succeed. But any 1s that they roll get taken out of the pool for that scene. Um, and then they continue to do so until they either run out of dice or they fail a uh, contest roll. And if they do, the candle goes out, and which leads you closer and closer to the end of the game. Um, when all the candles are out, of course, the game's over. And we had no other lights on in the cabin, so we just had the ten tea light candles in front of us. Right. And we were surrounded, surrounding the table. So the cool thing about it is when you go through that, you go through a phase called the truth phase, and then the players get to go around and give one truth. So they can say anything that they want, and now that becomes part of the game. Uh, the idea, though, is you're all going to die. You all know you're going to die from the very beginning. So the idea is all of the players need to uh, create a story and try to do it where both good and bad things are always happening to make the story the best story. So it's not always, you know, hey, I'm going to, I find a, you know, machine gun and I, now I can mow everybody down kind of thing. Well, that's no fun. It, you're not a hero. You're just a person trying to survive. Yeah. And uh, it really does, I would say the group that, I was jamming for the people that were there did a very good job of making it difficult, <laughs> difficult on themselves yes. and the rest of the party. The bridge went out. Yeah, so it, it, it went pretty well. And the other thing that happened <laughs> is... First, Steve had, uh, what were they, 
bombs coming down on us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> artillery shells. Yeah, all of a sudden it's just raining bombs, and I'm like, oh, great, Steve. <laughs> so the other thing that happens is each time a candle goes out, when it goes to the next scene, you only get as many dice, the party only gets as many dice as there are lit candles, <laughs> and any candles that have been extinguished go to the GM. So what happens in that case is, as it starts drifting down, right, and, and the GM will get more and more dice to roll, and then as we sort of, every time you have a contest, failure, or sorry, success, contest success, I get to roll the dice, and if I get more sixes than you do, then I win narrative control, and I get to say what happens. If you get more than I do, then you win narrative control, and you get to say what happens. So, it, and just, you know, it's not DM or GM against the party, it's everybody for the story. And it was really fun, and yeah, I'll fun. do it again. And it was uh, right before Candle went out, we were all sitting there, and the, there's a fireplace in the room that we were in that's on a thermostat. So when it got below a certain temperature, it would automatically come on. And we're all sitting there, and we're talking, and things are happening. And in all the dark, sudden, almost. And then almost the dark, and the fireplace all of a sudden comes on. and scared the crap out of us. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. The down, I mean, the hard part is you pretty much need to know the game because you're going to be having a very difficult time reading anything. Yeah, yeah. And, we have to uh, figure that because I couldn't even read the dice after I rolled them. Yeah, it was pretty hard. Um, it plays... Four and a it's GM. Supposed to be so five, f four to five and a GM. So yeah. up to six. We had seven, which was made probably made a, a little, little longer. longer. It took us what three hours? It's to about play. three hours. Now, really, the timer is the candles, right? Right. So as you're going through character setup, you light three candles. You do a few things. You light three more. You do a few more things. And yeah, then at the had... end, you sort of have this timer because those tea light candles only go yeah, about they don't go very two long. and a half hours. We had a couple go out on us uh, just because they've been going for so long. Yeah, and if a, if a candle goes out for any reason... Even if it's, like, accidental. Yeah, then that time frame is gone it's now. Gone. So we probably, towards the end, had about four candles go out on, on their, their own. own. We You could just see them, the... the They're just flickering the flame down. Was and going, going down, down and, and then, like, oh, you know, no. you're going to go to the next scene regardless of what's happening. So it added a little bit more drama. I don't think you'd do it online or anything. The best would be to do it around a table. We did it around a bunch of uh, play couches. with Death by Monsters crossover RPG with all the spoops. That would yeah. be fun. <laughs> yeah, because really, right the, up the, alley, the scenario is really just like a paragraph of, and you can come up with anything. You guys are here. This is what's happening. The world is dark, and uh, you know they're the scenario is going to play out how it does until you die. So it's, it's really just a two or three hour storytelling adventure with everybody. Yeah. I think if we if we all sat in our own computers and the rooms we were in were dark, it potentially you're not going to get the same it would, dramatic it, it, feeling. No, it wouldn't be the same. Which is what that game is all about. I mean, when you're sitting there in the dark, because one person would have the candles, and I, I don't know, I don't know. And there's a couple other neat things. I mean, you do a recording at the beginning of your character and what you know as they're sort of saying what where they're going and what they're doing, and then when the you know lights go down at the end, you. I'll get to listen back sitting in the dark. Yeah, it's a one shot. It's not a full campaign because you die. You all die. Yeah, it is. It is. There are one. There are only one shots. But like I said, two to three hours. Great. Uh, I can't. Um, I've got the. I'll post up on the Encourageable Party Twitter what the uh, the link is to get the game. It's just a. It's a book, and you know, maybe eighty pages. Most of that probably. 50 pages of actual rules, so and it's not hard to go through. And had a couple different scenario starters. Had quite a few in the back, and you know, a few. The hardest thing is just going through that first time and playing it, and having the you know the right group of people is going to make all the difference. In, yeah, and something yeah. like that. So, so great game to check out. Maybe we'll try it on the IP somehow. I don't know how we'll do it yet, but we'll uh, highly recommend it. Yeah, okay, fine. what else? What else do we have? Anything else to talk about? We have our, uh, and we'll talk three about it at the end again. Anniversary. But yeah, with three year anniversary the for the IP. Party. And uh, so we'll be streaming one of these days. Which day? We're doing it on our anniversary. Uh, this Saturday. This coming Saturday. Which is one day after our anniversary. Okay, yeah. So we'll uh, be doing that. IP Con, yes, Calm. We've been. I've been sort of uh, starting to get that sort of kicked off 2023. for 2023. 
Um, we, we're going to pick a month and sort of just talk about it a little bit, see if it's going to be feasible. There's a lot, if you've ever put together anything like this, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of planning, a lot of forethought that needs to go into it. Yeah, and then you want to get everybody who wants to attend a really good heads up. You want to give right. them, you know, uh, nine, ten months ahead of time so they can... Especially if they're flying in just specifically for this or yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's a lot to figure out. So, Scom, if you have, like, dates in 2023 that work <laughs> for you, give us a head start on getting this going. My initial thought is to wrap it around a con. but Oh, yeah, um, we can play 10 Candles at IPCon, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, and, so. and Britt has this, the list of stuff to do. Hey, Carl and 20 Games, how you doing? We were just talking about Carl. our uh, last week where we went to GeekCon. And the adventures we had. Yep. I mean, it's really fun. And, and I think just even with IPCon, Don't keeping it back. keeping it as sort of a, a big <laughs> cabin or lodge <laughs> kind of feel instead of just a, a big room at a hotel, I think yeah. it makes it so much more, you know, enjoyable. But it does Cozy. limit limit the number of people that you're going to be able to yes. have at a con. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but, you know, we'll figure it out and we'll post more stuff as we go. It's going to, you, gotta, you have to pretty much have things booked about a year in advance, so. Um, that cabin was nice. I think it was one of the nicer ones we've been to. We've done this five, five times. times now. Um, yeah, I think we all really liked it. The only thing was um, our room was pretty much open because we were in the, like a loft. Our bedroom was open to the first floor, which wasn't a big deal for us. Well, we all went but, to bed about the yeah. same time and got up about the yeah, same time. Yeah, so wouldn't and that be wasn't too bad? Prior geek cons, we've had situations where people up till three or four in the morning, making a lot of noise, screaming and drunk. I, I don't, I don't know. Like and uh, I don't know if I'm not. But we're all a little older now, <laughs> so it doesn't happen quite as much. Uh, but we've actually been doing this for six years. We just had to miss one year. Because yeah, of COVID. Well, yeah, we missed last year. Um, actually, we were at our last GeekCon. Right before right everything went bad. When we were hearing on the news about the COVID stuff, mm -hmm. and we all came home, and then soon after everything yeah. shut down, and now we just went back almost two years to the to week, and everything sort of opened back up again for the most part. Yeah, so, which is yeah. another reason why we kept it small. Yeah, yeah. Just be on the safe side. So if we do another GeekCon, we'll we'll hopefully well we will do another one, but when when we start planning that, we'll. Hopefully, get a little bit bigger place and be able to. Go. But we'll see how. Yeah, yeah, we don't. But IPCon is going to be big. Yes. Yes. So, we want to at least you know we're looking in the 30, 40 number. Hopefully, would be nice. That would be amazing. Yeah. So. We should talk to Rob and Christina because they just did Piranha Pig Con and they had 40 people. Yeah. So we'll have to. I mean, we we'll have to look into more how we want to do it. It's time and money, right? And figuring it yes. all out. So more to come on that. Um, like I said, we've got the uh, three-year anniversary coming up for the Saturday. Party. We're going to be streaming, just a chat. Yep. Chatting, talking about whatever comes up this Saturday at four Eastern. Yep, that'll be fun. Yep. And uh, let's see, we have your um, one shot for oh Red Wolf. Red Wolf, that's patron. Which is no longer right? called Red Wolf. It's called Bad Places, I okay. believe. But it's still in my head, Red Wolf, because that's how it started. So that's a, being released now. It's being, it should be three releases, I believe. And uh, so if you want to check those things out, join the Patreon. We have um, one, uh, maybe have two more, more plays for that. Yeah, we do a lot of one shots or uh, on the, well, one shots are usually six, seven hours long. So it's well, a mini it's, campaigns. It's a mini campaign. It's a mini campaign. And we've done Paranoia. We've done a few others, and there's going to be more. Um, coming down the line we got we're starting to plan our next, next weekend or this weekend when is it? it's this saturday that this we're coming saturday because yeah. it's we started so, guess, uh, so is that next weekend or is that this weekend that is how would you say that because uh, right now is the weekend so is it i mean it's still weekend right now but i would still say this this coming weekend this i would just use extra words to describe it in a better <laughs> six way six days from now yes there you go. <laughs> there you that's go. a better way to do it <laughs> then yeah the next saturday you come to Right, you can't you can't go back to last Saturday. I would, also, I would say this Saturday because next Saturday to me means two Saturdays from now. I like Tom's way of doing it. Yes, the, the next on the second <laughs> and third of April I will be. <laughs> That's even better. Yes. That's even be more specific. Yes. So I like that. 
April 2nd, we will be streaming. Skyong will be visiting his niece. Oh. And some friend's daughter. <laughs> no, same person. Some friend's daughter is his niece. Cool. Um, yeah, so there's lots, lots going on for everybody. And other than that, I think, I think we're good to get started. You got anything else you want to talk about? Uh, we plan to have our neighbors over to play games who we barely met. We talked about this but, last time. Oh, shoot. <clears throat> Never mind. And we wanted to... We, we got our to... neighbors on the other side, but we haven't met yet either. So we have, like, the house on one side has been empty for four years. People finally moved in. The house on the other side just sold and new people moved in. We haven't really met either of them. We've talked to them a little bit. I don't know if you've talked to them at all. I haven't talked to them yet, though. No. We're surrounded by new people. It's scary. <laughs> After I record a video presentation today, I'll woo! Be Elena, be done with school. Yeah, well, that's woo, good. Yay! Done with school forever? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, no. It was just a break. But Bill and Elena will be coming down. Yeah, that's join us coming for a weekend. Up, uh, in April. End of April. That'll be fun. And then uh, we're also going to have a lo our local keep. Um, no, G game day. Tabletop uh, day. International Tabletop Day. We used to do that every April. And, yeah, that's uh, going to be moved to May. End of May now, because Brian's going to be coming up and visiting us. Right. So, we'll, end of May? Is that what it was? End of May. Okay. Yeah. So, we got that coming up, and then, of course, right after that's Origins, Gen Con, and then we have one other con that we want to go to. We're not sure if it's going to be PAX or... Shucks. Shucks. We've talked about going to Shucks, because it would be neat to go out and actually meet Leland in person. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I want to do PAX U. We've been wanting to do that for three years now. So, I mean, screw Leland, right? <laughs> of course, those are in different months. That would be huh. a lot to do both. That would be a lot. That would, well, PAX U. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> um, we still got, you know, the. I still believe he's not even real. He's just we did try to get him to come out to us, but COVID ruined that. And he was like, it was right. the year, it was 20... 20. Yes. The year everything went to shit. He was going to, supposed to come out to Origins, but I kind of feel like I should go to some of those cons at some point. There's just so many other things to do. Well, that's why I was sort of thinking IP con we can wrap in with Origins. Origins because that way, you know, people can fly in for Origins, play, play games, buy games for a few days, and then instead of leaving to go home on that Sunday, just about 45 minutes away is the place that we went. And then sort of come down and play games for three or four days at the... At Leland the... is the latest iteration of, of Max Headroom. <laughs> <laughs> With fewer glitches. <laughs> <laughs> Different kinds of glitches. Yeah. Good idea with the double con. I mean, that, that way people can come in that yeah. would normally never get to go to a... Or if, if you're going to fly in from overseas. You know. Yes, Elena. You, well, no, Elena, you probably don't know who Max Headroom is. That was from the 80s. Yeah, that actor's still around quite a bit. Yeah. Um, what, what's something he's been... I have no idea, but I do know it was like, oh, it's Max Headroom! Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, lots of stuff happening and this year, and hopefully we'll yeah, it's a busy year be for able to meet a lot of people again. We've been sort of away from everybody for for two years, not getting to hook up with friends and stuff, so it would be nice to, yeah. to be able to do that again. We did get to go to Origins last year, but... It just wasn't the same. There wasn't a lot of people. Was it a TV show or a movie? Why am I thinking Max Headroom was a Max movie? Max Headroom was... Well, they might have did a movie, but initially it was some kind of little uh, MTV thing, I think, wasn't it? I don't Where remember. he just jumped in and did a little like, commercial... Not wasn't commercial, but something like that. And then they expanded it out or something. I just remember that he existed. And was glitchy. Yeah. And I think they made fun of it in... Um, Ah, oh, crap, eh? Um, the movie... Crap, eh? Yes. With Pizza the Hut, with... That was making fun of Star Wars, is the, the Mel Brooks movie. Oh, God um, damn it. What's the name of that? It is... I know what it is. Spaceballs. Spaceballs. Thank you. There you Thank go. you. <laughs> I had a brain lock up. Yes. Yeah. Of course, Spaceballs made fun of and referenced a lot of things. Of course. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 
Okay. All right, so let's get started here. We're play? 25 minutes in. So we I did to, go uh, all the way upstairs to get my lucky D10 uh, die. This is, is not it? it. This is not it because What's I that? went all the way upstairs to get it, then forgot why I went upstairs and thought it must have been to get a snack because I hadn't eaten yet. Went to look for snacks so we don't have anything I want, and I came back downstairs without the D10. So you walked up two flights of stairs and you went, Phew, I need some calories. Well, I hadn't eaten yet. <laughs> hydrate. Do you have anything to hydrate? I have a with? hydrate. I have a hydrate. Thank you. We do need to hydrate a little bit before we get started here. <clears throat> I did not eat the dye. No. <laughs> I completely forgot about the dye by the time I made it up two flights of stairs. <laughs> All kinds of hungry there. Yeah. Okay, let's get through this. Okay, so, so we are fighting against, like we said, the Peppin Milk Frog this time. Here, let me, wait, I got this all, um, let's see here. Is it under show me your name? Yeah, here we go. So Peppin is an out-of-towner. Oh, look, it redid our, uh, redid our little, uh, me and you screen again. Here. Okay, while you fix that, okay. I'm going to read this. But his face is well known around Eureka Springs. He was a milkman that sold his own patented milk from town to town, which he claimed knocked the socks off the standard stuff. Yet, he never explained what or where it came from. After some shady milk-related deaths in Eureka Springs, the old sheriff banned Pepin from peddling his milk in town. Pepin's reputation was tarnished, and his milkman days were over. Now Pepin is back to seek vengeance on the people who shunned his milk and ruined his career. Since this is our second battle, he is at the hooligan level, which means he's a milk tosser. At the start of Pepin's turn, he deals one damage to the closest townsfolk within five squares. You were thinking something dirty there, were you? Well, you want milk. <laughs> it's in quotes! Right there. Oh, so you, okay, so you read it correctly. So they were being... <laughs> Well, because it's not milk. Okay. But it's not milk. That's right. Anyway, he's going to do one damage to the closest townsfolk within five squares every turn. So that kind of sucks. Yeah, thanks. Uh, the mini, um, I see, uh, I, you can't see what's What mine. should Scum paint so next? So the mini has little milk coming out of the box, but the actual mini did not. So I uh, made the milk come out with resin and painted oh. it so it looks like it's pouring out onto the ground. That was fun and I probably do need to do the little you know, the smoky uh, gas looking smell thing coming out of the milk thing. I didn't I need to do that. But anyway I like to add little extras on there. Um, so Scum I'm painting a mini painting the heroes from Dungeon, Dungeon of the, of the Mad, Mad Mage. Mage. Uh, what should I paint next? Cleric, well, we paladin, all, we, or sorcerer? We all know we don't need a cleric. Nobody needs a cleric. No. <laughs> uh, paladin. Well, I was going to say sorcerer. Paladin. Since it is the dungeon of the mad mage, I'd probably make sure the... the Bill Ben sorcerer. says sorcerer. Hello. Sorcerer. Hey, Bill Ben. Nye board game guy. How are you doing? Sorcerer. I guess that's two votes for sorcerer. I've been outvoted. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. How you doing? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me. I need to get the stats updated. Bill yeah. sent, sent me stats a long time ago, and uh, I need to get those updated. Do you have Do you have any updates for me before I do it? <laughs> it there's been a lot of uh, high numbers in recent episodes that yeah. probably would uh, would move some things around. Um, let's see. Cleric is a great cleric with a guitar on his back. That's just weird. Sorcerer makes a lot more sense. Thanks. So in our home group, we do have a clave cleric, grave cleric, named Doug. <laughs> Doug the cleric. Yeah. Played by our friend John, and he has um, his spiritual, scythe? spiritual weapon as a oh. scythe. Yeah. And uh, he carries acorns with him, and anytime we kill somebody, he puts an acorn in their mouth so that they can't come back. For something. There's a lot of backstory yeah. to it. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Oh, Bill Ben's not up to date. Okay, well I'll just I'll just wait on you then. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's go over Pepin then. So he is in the hooligan phase. Does right? he have a chance does he have a friend called Willow? I don't know, we never got into that. We'll have to no. ask him. 
I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think he has any friends. <laughs> okay, so we start with the town phase. First part of the town phase is we draw up to three feats of metal. So he did accomplish one feat of metal. Yep. So he got two new ones. Right. Um, why do you have two turned up? You only, have, you only I, accomplished one. Yeah. He's cheating already. No, I just laid him down wrong. There we go. I had to look so at I, him I'm leaving mine face up because otherwise I will forget about them. And then I think when I accomplish them, I'll turn them face down. But I have not accomplished any yet. Because okay. I forgot about them. Well, then I'll do the same. Okay. So then we each get a town event. And because last time I uh, got a friend, a courier pigeon, I get to draw two town events. We've just started. We were we were chatting. So now we've just started. So we uh, drew up the three feats of metal. And now we're going to go through the town events. And since we changed the buy-in order last time, I go first. Okay. So I have... Death Grip, the team finds a burly fella crushed beneath a pile of rubble. His lifeless hands are still gripping tightly around a weapon. Perhaps one of you can pry it from his cold, dead hands. In buy and order, each town folk may roll plus max HP plus max moxie. So, four, my max HP is four, so that takes me to eight, and my moxie is two, that takes me to ten, which is not enough. I pull and pull, but no luck. So okay. now you get a roll. All right. Hey, Tom Posh, how are you? Oh, it. sorry. Hey, Tom. Hello, Tom Posh. Hello, Timothy. How are you today? <laughs> um, so I rolled a nine plus, plus your four. Max HP plus your max moxie. Four and two, so six more, so fifteen. Fifteen, you made it. Yeah. It says hot dog. I get a hot dog. You managed to pry it away from his strong grip. Receive the first two-handed weapon from the peddler deck. No other townsfolk may roll for this event. Awesome. Two-handed weapon. Well, can I can can I hand you stuff? I think we can. I will have stuff. to look that up. First two-handed weapon. Here you go, a tree chopper. A tree chopper. All right, let's take a look at it. Costs three moxie, which I only have two moxie to spend in any, any given turn. Deal one damage to yourself. Add plus five to your next accuracy roll with this weapon. So it cost me three moxie to use it. Uh, it does two damage and does have a plus seven, uh, uh, seven plus accuracy to get. So, so it's not as great, but. No, but I, I, I can store it, right? Yes, you can. Store it and use it for later. All right. And I can sell it for half price, right? Yes. And it is 12. Uh, that is nice. Money. Yes. You can get six money back for that. So that would be good to. Uh, I also have the Muggin Duo. Two stout fellows approach you, trying to take advantage of the chaos in town. Hand all over your. Whoa. Hand over all your money, Bob. You don't want to wrinkle the incorrigible party Sorry. shirt, do you? Sorry. Respect the logo. One or less <laughs> weapons owned. Or two plus weapons owned. I do own two weapons. Okay. These guys don't scare you. A flash of your weapon send the muggers running. Keep this card in front of you. It counts as one point feet of metal. So I have now essentially finished a feat of metal. Oh. Which may be the only way I get one. All right. So how, how did you get two towns of events? Because of the one? courier pigeon. Oh, okay. He brought me a second one. Nice. So I have one that affects all of us called makeshift, makeshift weapons. <clears throat> As a group, you search an old mill uh, for anything that could be of use. It says, if Yancey Plover is not in the group with Yancey is not in the group with us, uh, the area doesn't seem to have any useful supplies, but you do gain some coins. Uh, you find some coins on the ground. Gain three coins. Now it says... It says gain three coins. Does that doesn't say gain three coins each? So it is probably just you, because it okay. is your town event. All right, so this goes away. It does. Okay, so now we go to the uh, buy-in buy-in phase, right? Uh, the buy-in order. So buy-in order starts bottom up, right? Yes, I get to shop first, but I also have petty theft. 
I may take an item worth five coins or less from the peddler's shop at the beginning of each shopping session. There's nothing out there five. Oh, there is the gold chain. Yoink. And what does that do for you? As long as you own the most coins, you gain a plus one moxie. Let me hold it up closer. Woo! Too close! Yeah, I got my finger over it. So there you go. Bling! So that goes on your chest, right? Yes, it is chest gear. Gotta like the chest gear. <laughs> All right, and now you get, now the I get to buy. purchase first. And I have 14 monies. Okay, so let's see what we got here. We have <clears throat> the lover's patch. And you can read it up there if you want to. Choose another town folk as long as you own this. Whenever they are knocked out, you take two damage. It costs you two moxie, or you get plus two moxie, which is nice. To be able to do, but the problem, you know, is of course. Because Moxie is what is required to do pretty much any action. Uh, as long as you own this, whenever they are knocked out, if I get knocked out, she takes two damage, which just doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Not with only two players. Yeah. Okay, the next one is Waterproof Boots. You may move through the murky moat squares. If you end your turn in a water square, you are knocked out. So there Which is a murky moat. Do have the murky moat, and it is cause two movement to move through each square of the murky moat. It's risky. I yeah, don't know if it's worth it. It's just plus one movement, and that's probably not worth it. All right. So then we have. Where? <laughs> there we go. Woo, we got it. Where can we get? My arm's just not long enough. Okay, whenever a ruffian deals damage to you, you receive one coin. It's the gaudy vest. I'm going to have to stand up. So that's plus one max HP, which is nice, but it does cost uh, 11, and, you know, just getting a coin at this point, I don't think, I think we need to do everything we can to I don't know, like getting a coin, we are going to get hit. I am definitely going to get hit. Yeah. All right, so this one I got my eye on for Granny Melba. Uh, Mr. Horseman, leg gear. Uh, costs 13, but it gives you plus 3 movement. Which, with Granny, is really nice, because Granny uh, is ranged. Rudy Tudor. Yeah, she uses ranged weapons, and uh, she gets additional uh, accuracy added the further away she is. So, that's pretty nice for her, so she can stay out of the I feel beat. like a lot of these items that we can purchase from the peddler are conditional. Yeah. Quite conditional. The Martyr's Wand. Here we go. Uh, discard an accomplished feat, which you just got, right? Or no, not a feat. Not uh, really. I mean, it does count as a feat of metal. Deal one damage to the ruffian within five space. Five spaces. But I don't think I'll do that. No. Because we need the accomplished feats to become the sheriff. Yeah. So then we have... Oh, man, I got it. <laughs> Ruffian, let's see, the exploding cigar. Ruffian would, uh, can you read that? If a ruffian action would cause you to unequip or discard a piece of gear, you may discard this instead. If you do, the ruffian takes three damage. So this is incentive for me to get the little green screen camera working so I can just lay it there and it goes on top of it. Mm. Maybe I'll do that for next week. Maybe. Okay. You got my little arm there. Your. Let's quit moving. Your staves and wands gain this ability. One mox. Deal one damage to a ruffian when within four squares. We don't we have don't any have staves. Any. Or wands. No. I would have said stabs. That would be with an F, wouldn't it? No. Staff, S T A F F. Yeah. S T A V E S is stave. I would have said stabs. But that's okay. Medicine bag. For two moxie, restore one hit point to an adjacent town folk. That's pretty nice. Green screen cameras do make streaming easier for close-ups. Yes. Well, I had one, and then well, we you don't were, get as much of a workout. <laughs> we were using the. Uh, that's true. I could use the calorie burn. Uh, <laughs> the half a calorie burn. Put the card up there. <laughs> the green screen material we have doesn't work good close-ups, so I gotta go get. We something. need some kind of 
flat, just like a piece yeah. of paper green screen. Exactly. Something yes. that has no variance in its texture. Also, That's if you're ever taking food pictures, do not take them on that kind of fabric green screen. Thank you. Back alley bridges. Plus two movement. You may discard an accomplished feat of metal to Sorry. receive two coins at any time. All right. I mean, if we were really like going through these feats of metal, these things would be great, but the way we do it so far. Well, we've only played one round. It might be a lot more, a lot easier as we go along. I don't know. So I'm thinking about either buying the exploding cigar or the medicine bag, which is also conditional because we would have to be adjacent to each other and we don't end up being adjacent and to each other. And it costs you two moxie. Yeah, so it would be my turn. Yeah, and, and honestly, with Granny and her uh, rooter tutor, yeah, we're not gonna be next to I'm each not going to be near you. So, so I'm going to take the exploding cigar for eight. Okay. Which goes, it's an accessory, which goes right there. So that's five, six, seven, eight. I have six monies left. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take Mr. Horseman, I think. Get the extra movement. Three damage does seem like a lot. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That leaves me with two monies. Sweet. That means I had the most Mr. money, Horseman. so that my gold chain is going to bling me up a moxie. There we go. And this is leg gear. It gives me plus three movement. So that's one, two, three. It gives me seven movement. That's a lot of movements. That is great. And it's great for Granny. So, all right. So I don't, I can't afford to buy anything else up here. And you don't have anything else you want to buy, correct? I only have six money left. And I still need to have more money left than you. So, no, I don't want okay. to. Um, okay. So... These all go away, right? Yes, sir. And that board flips over. And we go out of the buy-in order, the buy-in phase, to the beaten phase. Button, button, button. And that's when we get to put Pepin's cards up here. He has six movement and two health. Okay. I believe uh, he's in the right spot. I moved him, so let me double movement. check. And how many health? Hold on, I'm double checking his placement. We're good, okay. Uh, 11. Okay. So a quick little recap about the fighting phase, the beaten phase, or whatever we want to call it. Um, so we have two tracks here, right behind Emily's head. Uh, one of them is the movement that shows where it goes, and the other one is the ruffian health. <clears throat> it's hard to... Let me see if I can do this. Hey, you're not going to see it. That's okay. I'll just do this. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So you got movement and roughing house. So they're going to start. He's going to start on 11. So you see the 7 and the 4 both have uh, are highlighted with the stars around them. So when we get him down to uh, one of those places, it's called uh, breaking the, point. a breaking point. And they get an additional action. Yes, it's, it interrupts whatever's going on. Unless if it's one of our turns, our turn ends immediately, and he gets an additional action. If it's his, his turn, at the end of his turn, he will get an additional action. And he can't. It, this can be triggered multiple times. So if like he gets down below a seven, and then he gets health back for some reason and goes back up, when he comes back down again, it'll be triggered again. He will never go above eleven health though, so we don't have to worry about the twelve trigger. Yeah, so once again, like Kingdom Death, this is a brutal game. It more than likely we're gonna die. <laughs> but yes. we tend to tend to like this kind of thing. So let's talk about the terrain pieces that are out well, on the board. Well, one thing, okay. just a reminder, he's a hooligan level, so he will do every turn, he will do one damage to a townsfolk within five squares of him, whoever the closest is within five squares. So on his very first turn, because he always goes first, he will do one damage to me. Nothing you can do Dark about off. it. Nothing I can do about it. All right, okay, so, so this is the board. We have the old jalopy. This, for one moxie, we can attempt to send flying. So we can potentially get him positioned. Get, somebody gets over to the old jalopy, jump starts it, and it will go and hit him and potentially do three. three. It hit him and anybody else that's in the path. Yes. Uh, the rickety farm. We can, for one moxie, knock on the door for assistance. And we can either, depending on what we roll, get two hit points back, or the farmer will put his shotgun out a window and do three damage to the ruffian. We have the wishing well. 
we can pay two coins to make a wish and we roll and we can either get one hit point back or nothing happens or uh, we'll get a card from the peddler deck for 10 coins or less buzzing hive buzz 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 is an obstacle which means nobody can move through it not even the ruffian if a townsfolk or a ruffian starts their turn adjacent to this they take one damage the murky moat is a feature so we can move across it uh, it can only be passed over on the bridge when standing on the bridge for two moxie we can pull the plug if we pull the plug water drains from the moat and the bridge collapses underneath our feet flip the murky moat terrain piece it is now the dangerous ditch terrain piece which has its own card keep going i'm trying to figure out there's a Oh, yeah, go um, so the dangerous ditch, ditch is a feature. It costs two movement to enter any dangerous ditch square. Does not affect ruffians or movement via gear or abilities. Oh, so wait, we can't even cross the water. Yeah, we can only cross on the, on bridge. the bridge. It was, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's the uh, dangerous ditch that you can cross okay. anywhere. So as long as this is here, we can only cross on the bridge. We can pull the plug to turn it into the dangerous ditch instead. And for one moxie, we can scavenge the ditch. On a one through seven, nothing happens. We lose one, but we uh, step on broken glass. We lose one movement. And if we were only at one movement, we're knocked out. On an eight plus, we can get a coin from, or a card from the peddler deck. Okay. I don't know if it's worth it. So, no, there's not two mics. There's one mic. I had the TV volume up so we could hear if there was anything with the music or anything going on, which looped through the microphone to the TV volume, so I turned that all the way down, so you shouldn't hear it anymore. Um, even if I talk really loud, you shouldn't hear it at this point. But we won't hear any... Um... Notifications or anything, that's the only way, because we had to, you have to turn the microphone, you have to have the, uh, sorry, the desktop audio on for us to be able to hear the notifications through Twitch. So to do that, I have to turn the volume all the way down on everything else so it doesn't cycle through the microphone. So you should should be good now. I just had it up too loud. So, but thanks for letting us know because it's annoying to hear an echo right now. Um, so that actually makes the boots more worth it because we with the boots, we could have passed through, but still potentially dangerous because we could have got stuck. But it was real expensive and it really didn't, we, we just, really what we need to do is use the bridge <laughs> if we need to get across. I mean, yeah. It's, 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 it, it's, it, it's what terrain does, right? Yeah, it yeah. gives us. Okay, so we got the bear trap. For two moxie, we can set the trap. We have to roll one to two. We fail to set the trap. Anything higher, we can set the trap. And if the ruffian moves on to the bear trap for any reason, they immediately take two damage and lose two movement. And then the bear trap's done. The only thing we have left, we have two wooden fences out here. They are obstacles, which means we can't go through them. Uh, but we, for one moxie, we can interact. We roll, what if one to three, whatever we had in mind is clearly not working out. Four plus, a success, we can either break down the fence or we can hop over the fence. Okay. Okay. I'm and fine. yes, Gum, all these problems would go away if I had, uh, if we both wore um, headphones. headsets. But Emily doesn't want to. Nah. I just turned the volume down. If something pops up on the screen, somebody will let us know. But if we ever did do a thing where we were playing with somebody else that we had to import in, we would oh, have, yeah, we yeah, would yeah. have to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the cigar does more damage than a bear trap. Smoking really is harmful to your health. That's true. Yeah. That is a good point. Yeah. I never thought about that. I guess they should sell those bear traps in stores then. Because you have an option. Well, you I can mean. Get a, you can get a pack of cigarettes or a bear trap. I mean, if you're going to do damage to yourself regardless, might as well take the better option. Anyway. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, you are first in the beaten order after Pepin. So Pepin goes first. So we flip a a All right, card. Here we go. We find out what he does to us. Other than he does give me one damage, so I will take that. Skim splatter. These are all going to be milk based, I assume. Probably. Pepin spills a crate of milk around his feet. Why is it so slimy? 
Target. All townsfolk within two squares. Nobody. Uh, it says the skimmy milk burns on. I guess. It, it, does he move then? Can he move and then do? Does it say he moves? No, it just it says. Uh, target all townsfolk within two squares. So I guess if he's not within two squares at the beginning of his turn. Does he move um, first though? That is a good point. Because it usually says on there, you know, he moves to the nearest target or some or yeah, the yeah. away target, but he doesn't. So I think this would be he spilt the, the milk where he stood. Yeah. Would be the way I would I'm take it. I'm good with that interpretation. Uh, so the next, I'll just read the whole thing just so we know. The slimy milk burns on contact, deal one damage to all targets. Then, okay, move Pepin towards the farthest town folk. So the... After he spills after it? After he spills it. So yeah. And then the after effects, the, uh, I'll read that if we ever need to do that. So it doesn't hurt anybody. He spills the milk right where he is. Then he moves towards the farthest town folk, which he has a movement of six. Which is you. I am the farthest. So... One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So he's Hot done. Hot milk. <laughs> okay, so it, you, it's your turn. It goes to me because I'm you are first next in, in the beaten order. In the beaten order. All right. So I I can move and or attack or split those things up in any way that I feel I want to. Right. I can move if I have a movement. Uh, I have a total movement of seven so i can move three do something and then whatever. yes sir so what i'm going to do is try to move as far away from him as possible to get the best option of being able to shoot so do i have to spend moxie to jump over the fence i do don't i mm -hmm. well, i only have two moxie and it's going to take both of those moxies to be able to shoot my gun so i think what i'm going to have to do crap ton of movement you can move around the fence Alright, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that still line of sight because it's edge to edge, I believe? Right, yes. So your edge to his edge connects, so you're good. You know you know what I'm I was here, right? I think what I might do is go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That way I'm not getting myself stuck back in this corner. And or I know or, I could go back and turn the through the car. Yes. But we got to get him in the right position. It's going to be a, a so turn, turn after. So if you go up here like you were, and yeah. the next turn you can try and do the car, and I can come over onto the bridge, and then either way, he's either going to come here and stop or go over towards you and That's stop. Good point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can still attack. So I have my Rudy Tutor, and it cost me... Actually, it cost me one um, moxie. Yes. To shoot it, so I can shoot it. Only, no, you, you I can, can only shoot it once. You right? can only activate each. Right. Thing once. Um, okay, so I could jump over the fence, but I don't think it's going to gain anything, and potentially could give us more problems, right? Right. Um, and you cannot shoot over the fence because it's an obstacle. Okay, right. then we'll just go ahead and use the Rudy Tutor here. Um, so I, it's a six plus accuracy. But I have an additional plus one accuracy for the, uh, what do we call that? Maraca. Uh, Maraca. So I already have one, sorry, one additional accuracy that I have to. So I'm at negative one accuracy on my character sheet. But you also um, have farsighted. Townsfolk within three squares of you have an additional plus one accuracy. Yeah, so not good. On that. And then I am farsighted, so. Add X to Granny's accuracy rolls when attacking, where X equals the number of squares between her and the target. Now, Five. What, would you count? You never go diagonal. That's what I'm saying. So you started oh, here. So. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we have six. Minus one. Plus. So it's five. So you need to roll the die, and you add five to your die roll. Well, so I have an accuracy. Yeah, you have your accuracy of negative one, yes. All right, so I need a five or better, right? Yes. Crit. Well, that's a good start. So. So now you roll on the crit chart. Okay. Don't roll one. Three. So you do the damage of your gun. So that is a two damage to. Then Captain. you rolled a three. 
So, your hit leaves the ruffian flustered. Their anger makes them predictable. Reveal their next ruffian action. So reveal it, so we know what he's going to do next turn. Oh, so we get to see it. Okay, yeah. so what he's going to do next time is roundhouse swing. Pepin spins rapidly with his arms extended. Target, far farthest townsfolk, which is me. Yeah. Move towards the target. All townsfolk who collided with Pepin during this action take one damage, then deal one damage to all townsfolk adjacent to Pepin. Uh, oh, jeez. The after effect is, if any townsfolk owns milk-soaked limb, which I don't think we no. do, uh, blood flies from Pepin's flesh wound, Pepin takes one damage. So, go over that again. The farthest townsfolk, that's me, uh, move the target towards, uh, move towards the target, so he can get to me with Well, yeah, you have six, six movement, so. Um, One, two... So four, five, oh. yeah, I don't think he can get there. I don't think I he think can get I move seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. He'll be one away from you. Yeah. Okay. So he can't get to you. Sweet. I mean, I think technically he could probably <laughs> go one, two, three, four, five. But he and can't. Then he'll be diagonal to you. He, yeah, he can't because of the fence. fence there. He can't be full. So that, right. yeah, that makes sense. So we know that's going to happen. So what we got to make sure is you don't get. You yeah, don't I end got, your turn where away. you can get hit. Which means I'm not going to be attacking him, so I just got to run away. Anyway, um, that's like the Tasmanian Devil. Exactly, yeah, yes. Yeah. What did they call it? They called it a, a Round roundhouse house. swing. Okay. Or what's the thing that Shaft's going to get when you level up? Whirlwind attack. Yes. Yeah, okay, so it is now my turn. So I only have five movements. So if I went one, two, three, attack... Four, five. You'd be safe because we know she, he is going to move toward. No, he won't. He'll, He'll move to the farthest. Right. But he does. What's that say? Right there. Start Pepin's turn. He deals one damage to closest town folk within five squares. But, so I would take one damage. You don't have any ranged weapons, right? No. So if you just moved, well, let's see. If you say you want one, two, three, four, five. I'll take one damage. We'll take right. one damage, but you're not going to be in this pathway that we know. And we're separating out. He's going to move or, up here. Or, and go one, two, three, four, five. Start working on trying to get that. Well, that's not a bad idea, because if you can, you're, he's going to go towards the furthest one, right? right? One, Which two, we three, really four, want you to be five. farther away than me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Your yeah, there's no way you can get him. Why do we want? Because if you could pull him here, have him coming this way, I go start the jalopy, hit him with the, the jalopy, well, and then um, he'll be standing in the way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think you just unless you want to attack. Is there anything you can do to attack and still get out of the way? No. So I think you just move then. Okay. Then you won't take damage. Right. Right. Which I'm already down one from right. the very beginning. So. Or do I go? I put, there's no benefit to going this way. I need to go across the bridge. I think so too. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And that's it. All right. So we go back to Pepin's turn then, right? How much health do the characters have? Well, Granny Melba has four health. And Quintus Bench started at four health, but I'm now down at three. And, you know, it doesn't take long a, a hit. Hurts. You know. <laughs> yeah. It hurts. And it's, and it's tough to get hit points back, too, really. There's a couple things we can do, but even when you go there, you're still rolling a die. Yeah, it's not guaranteed. Potentially could do more damage to the when you went than when you went there. Yeah. All right, so that, that's the end. Health is pre yes. very precious in this game. Exactly, just like Kingdom Death. You, it's cool. you, don't, you don't mess with it. All right, so we know. I wonder what this is. Oh my! So go to the further. So it's roundhouse swing, of course. Pepin spins rapidly with his arms extended. Go to the furthest town folk, which is me. So okay. he can move up to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Still can't hit me, but it says uh, uh, move towards the target. All townsfolk who collided with Pepin during the action take one damage, and nobody. Then deal one damage to all townsfolk adjacent to Pepin, which is none of us. 
So then we don't have to worry about the after that effect. That horse is already coming in very handy. Yep. Nope. Mr. Horseman. Mr. Horseman, of course. That's plus three movement was awesome. Yes. Okay, so now. That's what I liked the, about the original Descent. If you took one damage, you'd be like, oh, dang, I'm going to die. Exactly. <clears throat> very much so. Um, so you're going to try and hotwire. goes back hot to my wire. turn, yes. right? So I'm going to move. I believe I should move as far as I can away from him. Because he's still, he's, the, the jalopy doesn't push him back at all. No, right? it just collides with him. So if I could go one, two, three, four, five, start the jalopy, then go six. And yeah, next turn, or if you have enough moxie left, you can. Well, I'll use, I'll use coin. how much moxie does it take me to do the jalopy? It is one moxie, and for the wishing well is uh, two coins. So, do coins? yeah, I do have two okay. only, but I could I also shoot? And do the jalopy? Yeah. Because one's up, so I think yeah, that's what one I need to do. Yeah. So I'm gonna move back first. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Then I'm going to spend one moxie spend to try the jalopy. Yep. So you need a roll. Okay. Roll higher than a four. Four. Uh, higher than a four. Oh, you need to be here. I then. need it higher than a four. Wait a second, let me do that again then. <laughs> That's a two. No, that's still not higher than a four. You're not this? understanding what I'm saying. Six. Here. There, there. Did I supposed to do that the first time I rolled? Yes. Uh, you need yes. to be more specific. In I'm your sorry. Directions. You needed a five or higher. Okay. So what I get with a four? Nothing. Okay. The car won't start. Nothing happens. So I think then I'll move. You're gonna one more. Don't stay next to the car because the next time you I get try, more, I'm further away. I get additional. But if you stay next hitting. to the car. But I can move next turn easily. Oh wait, you can't stay next to the car because you couldn't shoot him. Doesn't matter because I want to have you can't, more. You can't shoot him here. Uh, how's your mom, Elena? Uh, the game's going. Don't. Okay. Say anything good or bad. Because <laughs> there's we have all. Ooh, and twenty games redeemed. Pick a die face. Oh. Which die face would you like to pick? Wait, Carl? are we are we doing that right? At, because it's still in my turn. Save it for when you need it. I think we needed it right then. Well, if we need it, I think if, yeah, I think uh, I'm going to go ahead, because I'm still in the middle of my turn. I haven't finished my movement yet. <laughs> yeah, the game is going. So I think that's uh, okay. appropriate time to use this die face. So, so I would say we choose, actually, we'll, we'll let uh, Carl choose, because you don't necessarily. Uh, Our choice, he says. Oh, our choice. Well, then it has to be a crit. <laughs> it would be foolish not to do a crit. Okay, so first we resolve the jalopy. Move the old jalopy forward until it collides with a terrain piece or board edge. All care until it collides with a terrain piece or board edge. So it goes all the way off the board. Does all that push him? No. All characters in its path take three damage, then remove the old jalopy from the board. Okay, the jalopy goes three damage. Three damage. One, two, three. Now Which that's going to go. your turn. Yeah. We just got to remember. That we have the crit roll to do, so we might as well do that now. Or we're gonna yes, forget. right. So roll for crit. Seven. Seven. You're invigorated by your hefty hit. Increase your movement, moxie, or accuracy by one for the fight. Well, I'm gonna go accuracy. Do you Ooh, need moxie? You can do moxie. Moxie. Definitely, is definitely do moxie. Thank you very much, Carl. Now, now let me think about this. All I can do is shoot this gun once, though, right? And I have one nice moxie. jalopy attack, thank you, Elena. So, so therefore, um, it doesn't make sense for me to take the moxie, but because I can only shoot this one time, and it's only one moxie. So if I have three moxie, I guess it helps me jump over fences and things like that. Um, we're famous, woo! <laughs> All right, I'll do the moxie. What was the other choices? Movement, which I, you don't I really don't need. need that. Accuracy. Accuracy would be nice to be at zero. I guess do the accuracy. That's what I was thinking. Okay. All right. Okay, so your turn is interrupted. Right. So now we hit a breaking point. So now he we gets to have go again. To, he gets to go. Yes. So. Flip card. God, I should have moved that. Okay, I guess I couldn't have. All right. So milk frog coming up. Ah, the old tongue fling. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's got to do some damage. Uh, Pepin wraps oh, I his. I hope it doesn't do damage. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus points. Pepin wraps his gigantic tongue around his victim. Target closest town folk on the board. That is me. Discard this card and play the next action. 
What? It says, if there, sorry, if there's only one town folk on the board, discard, discard. Okay, that makes more sense. Sorry, I didn't read that other line. Didn't need Move. To read everything, all the words. Really? Mm. Okay, well, I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Move forward. Uh, move towards the target. If Pepin reaches them, deal one damage. Okay, so he's going to go one, two, three, four. Okay. So he does one damage to yep. me. Yep. Okay. After effect. Uh, do we do the after effects every time? Yeah. Okay. Pepin grabs the target with his tongue and chucks them at another townsfolk. Place the target adjacent to the farthest townsfolk, regardless of distance. Then that town folk takes one damage. Well, that sucks. Okay, where do we want me placed? Which adjacent part? I would say you don't want to lock your. Do you? Are you going to do anything with the wishing well? Um, I can, because I have money to spend. I could get a health point back potentially. I think that's probably what you need to do then. Okay. So you, and I take one damage, you take so one I go down damage. to three. Okay. There we go. All right. Because I'm only at two health. Carl is waiting for a tongue attack. After all, it's a frog. The milk frog. That's right. So, me. That is a tongue lashing. <laughs> that is... <laughs> There's Never the received joke. a tongue lashing There's quite like joke. that before. Okay. So, that was... That interrupted my turn. Okay, so now, it's my, so now it's my turn. Uh, I wasn't done taking my It doesn't movement. matter. You're done. Oh, it, it stopped interrupt, my turn? It interrupts. It's done. You're... you're Immediately stop. Well, that sucks. Okay, your turn. Okay, so shall I wishing well? Uh, you're there. Okay, so I had to spend two. So I'm going to turn in my five and take back three. And I still have more coins than you, so the gold chain is still in effect. Okay. And I roll the die. So you're checking these two coins into the well? Yes. Okay. I need a four or higher. Now remember, your first roll should be a four or higher. Yes, the first roll. And that you said four or higher? Yes. That's different than last time. It was uh, higher than a four when you told me to do it. So now, higher than a three would be what you need. We are kind of stuck in the corner, but we can use Moxie to hop the fence, potentially. Yeah. So. I mean, the only other, I could go back and it, it, it really could bite us in the ass, really, being up in that corner now. Yeah. But it was worth it to get the jalopy going, I think. Yeah, I mean, three points is, is a lot. That's that's a that's, two. That's not higher than a four. That's half as high as a four. That's half as high as a four. Hmm. Ah, Skelm redeemed to pick a die face. Skelm. Oh. So a four to seven Skelm will give me one hit point back or an eight plus. I'll get the first card in the peddler deck worth ten coins or less. So what we need to do is when we're done playing this is write panic roll and just let them know that the better way to play this game <laughs> is occasionally to just change a die face to whatever you want it to be, and it makes it a lot easier, not so brutal. I like it. My choice, so I think I will go with the one hit point. What do you think? Um, what are we choosing now? Either one hit point or Do one hit point against him? No, I get one oh. hit point back, or I get a coin or a card from the peddler deck. You need the hit point. You're yes. down to two. Okay. Thank you, Scalm. All right, I like it. Okay, so now we go back to him, and he does damage to anybody within five squares. Yeah, and we're neither one. one now two, does he three, move first? Four, five. No, it's the very start of his turn. Okay, so we're good there. Now we flip a card. All right. Yeah, I was gonna take a damage if I hadn't gotten flunked. Yeah, tongue well, flung. Good tongue lashing. <laughs> Frothy frenzy. Ooh. Pepin grabs a slimy milk bottle from his crate and chugs. Target, none. Pepin is invigorated uh -oh. by his milk. He gains plus one movement. Reshuffle the deck and play the next card in the action deck. So I, it doesn't say... All the discards go in. Reshuffle. Okay. So he gets plus one movement. I moved it up already. Man. That's not good. No. And that could come up it's multiple like times. Popeye with his spinach. That means he's going to get progressively faster, faster and faster. Damn. Carl says he'll be right back. We're not to die until he comes back. All right. All right. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> well, if we're going to die, we just stop and take an intermission. Mm. Yeah. 
and then he can watch us die. I think because he wants to watch us die is really what it boils down to. <laughs> that should be concerning, shouldn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so now we pull the next one. Uh, Froggy Flatten. Peppin springs into the air, becoming a tiny speck in the sky. Target furthest townsfolk. Which were both me. to be it's you. Me. Place Peppin adjacent to the target, oh, regardless no. of distance. Oh, then no. trigger the after effect. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, go ahead and place him up there and I'll read what happens. After effect. Peppin flattens you like a pancake. The target must take one damage or lower their movement by two. Ouch. My movement's at five, so I guess I'll do that. Ooh. Uh, well, you're I mean, always going to be closest regardless, then. There's no way you're going to... He is going to give you a damage at the first of every turn. And you're going to die Okay, off. and I'll go down to two health. I mean, you're probably going to get that next time anyway, but... God, Peppin's a bastard. <laughs> All right, so... The problem is I need to move to shoot my weapon. Unless I... To well, swap you, out, does it cost anything to yeah, swap out? Yeah, you get to pay two moxie. Is your root and toot and two handed? Oh, you got the maraca in your other hand. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it is your turn. Well, you, you, I mean, you got a shit ton of movement with a horse. Yeah, yeah, I can move away. I'm just trying to figure out how I can, if there's any way I could help you. But you know, I, I'm gonna go with the the movement down because okay. he is going to hurt me yeah. at the start of his turn and then you're going to be the only one left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That puts him one, two, three, four away from me. So with the Rudy Tutor, that gives me six and I'm at zero now with accuracy. So six, uh, oh. I need a six plus and I got four. So I add four, right? Why are uh, you adding four? That? Because he, one, two, oh. three, four away from me, and I get. So you need a two. You need to roll a two plus. Yeah, I need a two plus. Oh wait, you know what? Ooh, hold on, hold on. You roll a two or lower after attacking, but that probably doesn't count because of the die roll. Never mind. Oh, and I did. I won one too because you personally trigger the ruffian's breaking point. So I did that. So what does that mean? Oh, okay. So if you achieve this, I can take four gold or one ruffian damage. If you take four gold, you'll have more gold than me, and my chain won't All activate anymore. All right, and then just give him one damage then, but I did accomplish this. Okay. Um, i got to remember nice. that at the end. And let's see. Uh, I can't do the other two right now. All right, so if I damage him, he's going to uh, get a... Breaking point. Breaking point again. All right, so I need a two plus. Four. That's enough. So that gives him two, um, damage. two damage. Which triggers the next breaking point. So we go here. Yep. A massive chomp. Peppin snaps his jaw violently. Target, closest count for. Hey, that's me. Move towards the target. If Peppin reaches him, deal one damage. It's one damage. See, it's a good thing I took the movement thingy. So now I'm After on two effect, health. Peppin clenches his jaw tightly around the target. They can't get loose. Uh -oh. The target skips their next turn. Oh. Oh. Which is right now. Yeah. That's not good. That's not good. I'm in the jaw in the frog mouth. He's slimy. back. Thanks for not dying. I didn't even have to spin. <laughs> <laughs> so right. uh, I'm currently clenched in the jaws of this pig or er, pig, frog. Frog. Frog can't take my turn and it is his turn and at the start of his turn he does one damage yeah so now I am at one health can you use you can't use the well again can you no it's done it, it's uh oh no I can, I can use no. it no it's only done if you roll an eight or higher so I can oh okay. except it's I don't get a chance right someone got eaten by a frog that kind of sounds familiar <laughs> yeah right hopefully I don't have as bad an ending <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're... It's, it's his turn, It's his right? turn. Jug crush. Peppin hoists a milk jug high above his head. Target, closest town. Oh, wait, cigar. Wait. 
Uh, uh, no, it says if it would ca cause you to unequip or discard a piece of gear, I may discard this instead. So. Yeah, he hasn't done that. Target closest town folk. Move towards the target. If Pepin reaches them, trigger the after effect. After effect. The target has a chance to react. They must choose one. Cover. The target cowers and at the jug, glances off of their head. They take one damage and must lower their uh, accuracy by one. Okay. Or brace for impact. If Moxie is Moxie plus three, the target squares up, taking the full force of the milk jug for two damage. The jug bounces backwards, spilling the milk on down Pepin's back. Pepin's weakness is now active. Remove this card from the game. So, Problem is, I'm at one health right now. So you can't take the two health. So you can't do the second. Actually, you can't take either. If, you're, if Moxie is three plus, I could do that. Okay, so my Moxie is three. Target squares up, taking the full force of the jug for yeah, two damage. But you'll take two damage. I'm, I'm dead either way. Okay. The jug bounces backwards, spilling milk down Pepin's back. Pepin's weakness is now active. I'll remove this card from the game. And Pepin's weakness is... Milk burned backside. Whenever Pepin is placed in a new location, he takes one well, damage. Well, then you're going to have to take one for the team here, right? I mean, I'm dead either way, right. right? That's what I'm saying. So at least that way, I can just run away from him at that point, and he'll peter out and die. Yeah, it's, it'll be all on you. Yeah. Unless there's something that you can do to bring me back. Yeah. This is sort of the opposite of what happened last time. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So my Moxie is 3+, plus, so I can do that. So his weakness is now active. Okay. Remove this card from the game. Okay. Show that his weakness is active. So if he is ever placed anywhere. Does that mean like he moves? It's No, there's a specific wording. So if something happens where he is placed, it will say placed. Mm. Then that triggers. Like when he did the jump. It said place. And yes. Next, okay. Yes. So yeah, if I activate the weakness, John has a better chance. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so instead yeah. of almost a definite failure, it's a sort of definite failure. Yeah, it's, it's a less likely failure. Right, right. Okay. So now it is Pepin's turn. Um, okay. Yep, because yeah. that was an interrupt. Roundhouse swing. Pepin spins rapidly with arms extended. Farthest town folk. Move towards the target. Okay. You get one damage. All right, now I'm down to two. If any townsfolk owns Milk Soak Glim, nope. then we're done with that card. It is now your turn. All right, so... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That gives me... There should be six in between us, right? Or no, seven in between us. Well, right? do you want to run over this way? Because you can still shoot him, but you might be able to get him get the bear nice. trap triggered or get help from the farmer. Uh, you're probably right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He seven. can get to you on his turn. Oh, uh, well, the other way he couldn't. Too bad Pepin didn't take one damage per space. The other way I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you would put one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, well, six, seven. I, you would be here. I, one is here because okay. I'm sitting there. So you'd be I'm here. actually sitting right here. So. So you'd be here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he'd be able to move one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. He moves seven now. Oh, well then there's he, not he, a thing I can do. No, about he can get to you either way. Okay, so I think uh, need a new redeem thing and kill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would make this game so much faster. Um, so I guess the question is, and I have, I have no problem shooting over the murky water. Right, right. There's right. no issues there. No, because it is a feature, not an obstacle. Since he's going to be able to get to me either way, I'm better off trying to get the bear trap to work or, or to the get farmer. to the farmer. And the farmer I can get... Can, Only one health if I get there? You can get either two health or the farmer will do three damage to Pepin. That's the way I need to go then. Right. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and shoot then. That's okay, Elena. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, she says I have, she has lots of points. Sorry, she's distracted today with homework. So we got um, 
I can spend one Moxie to I need a six plus accuracy, and I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six that you can add to that. So, so I, I need to roll a zero, <sighs> right? Yeah. Can you roll a zero? Better. Better than, than a, a zero. zero. On a D10, can you roll better than a zero? I don't know. Woo! I didn't get a crit, uh, so crit nine. Yeah. So you do two damage to him? Two damage. So he is now at one health. It's going to be close. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is going to be super close. Okay. Nail biter. Oh, N20 redeemed. Pick a die face. What die face do you want to pick, Carl? They must have a lot of points stored up for a while. Because we haven't been playing kind of games that's, where they could pick things. That's true. Well, that's a good strategy now. <laughs> if we're really doing shitty, we need to go in and play a couple uh, other games and on an off days or something. We spend it just in case for the next roll. Um, well, I mean, if we use it now as a crit... It potentially could be wasted, because if you roll a 1 on the crit hit chart, it's just gone. But if I did roll above a... Eight, he's dead, and it's over. That seems like cheating. I think we save it. I mean, it's all cheating, but I think we save it. I agree. <laughs> I would, I would feel bad if we won in that way. I'd feel dirty, you know. Oh, Skelm also re uh, redeemed pick a die face. Well, now we have to do it. <laughs> do we have to do it, Skelm? I, I mean, I, that to be a crit? I, I will feel dirty, but. <laughs> If we don't roll above an eight, it's not wasted, right? If we don't do it, then one of those are gonna, <laughs> one of those are going to go to waste, right? Tom Posh also has lots of points, so it's either four pick of die faces or a half hour of only talking like Shakara. <laughs> Tommy make a damn good point. I think okay. I think we have to use it. Okay. Say a crit. It's, it's a crit. So now I'm rolling for the crit yes. on the crit table. Four. four. You crush the ruffian's walkie bits. Lower the ruffian's movement by one. That's good. That helps. Yes. If, if this goes on. Yes. Perfect. Now I don't feel dirty. <laughs> I feel a little, I just feel better. Okay. So. A little dusty. Not, not fully dirty, just a little dusty. That's right, a little dusty. So now it's his turn, right? Yes. Wait, right. me. Leaping cannonball. Oh no. Pepin leaps into the air and lands with a powerful thud. Target farthest town folk. Place Pepin adjacent to the guard the target regardless of distance. Deal one damage to all townsfolk within three squares. Hey, guess what? I know we won. So it goes over here? Yeah. I take a damage, takes me down to one health. And since he's weakened. Yes, he lands and he dies. Ah! Yes. And we only cheated really twice. <laughs> So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. <laughs> I mean, that could have went wrong very, 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 very quickly, right? I mean, that was that could have been the end right there. Yeah, yeah, because you have one health left. I I just went down to one health, but um, I mostly want to help you get through mission number one. Nothing worse than failing that first mission and having to do it over. <laughs> Don't tell him this is part two. <laughs> this is his game two. Because the way in the game you play through four um, bad guys, bad Ruffians. guys, and that is the entire game. It's not yeah, like action, Kingdom yeah. Death where you keep going on and on. So you play through four, and this is the second. Yes. Um, but they do get harder as you go along. You start with a chump, then a hooligan, then a troublemaker, then the final, final fight. fight. So <clears throat> it is going to be. Uh, it's going to get a little rough yes yes so no that's great I, I didn't want to lose that so now we get some stuff right for beating the yeah we do we do we do we do we get some monies i think on ruffian defeat townsfolk may discard any unaccomplished feats they do not want for the next oh, round oh, oh wait 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 hey land, ram beard land the final blow on a ruffian i get oh. three gold damn and in the fight as a soul survivor i get six gold damn so, yeah. Good job. That's tough as nails and peacekeeper. So, all right, all right, all right. We actually, hey, Richmond. we just defeated Pepin the Milk Frog. And we didn't even hardly cheat. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Well, it's it's approved <laughs> cheating. Approved by us, yeah. Well, then, uh, that's the only important people in the game, right? I uh, hope you enjoy your next stream and your walk. We are going to yep. be trying to go for walkies more ourselves. We'll be doing more walkies. Have a good day. As expected. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> Hardly cheated, yes. Um, do you have any unaccomplished feats that you want to get rid of? I have accomplished... Uh, well, let's see. I think I've accomplished Yeah, we follow all the rules. Feats. It was them that cheated. <laughs> you really can't... Yeah, you really can't blame us for doing what... We put out there as potential <laughs> cheating. No, I've accomplished all of my. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of this one because I'm just going to see that happening. But anyway. Okay. Okay. What else? Um, each challenge folk receives six coins. I believe you have now more coinage than I do, so my gold chain will not be in effect unless things change for the next play. Okay. Ooh, that's good money. That's good money. The townsfolk who accomplished the most feats this round, which is you since I didn't accomplish any, receives a piece of ruffian gear. So the ruffian gear is in this box somewhere. Nice, nice. Okay. Ruffian gear for Pepin Nutfrog. You should have points for the defibrillator to bring characters back to life. Yes. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. Is it any of the gear? Oh, okay. So, so there's three pieces of gear, and you will randomly get one. So let's see what we got here. We have the milkman's hat. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that's plus one moxie and plus one max HP. Oh, that's, that's very pretty nice. nice. Frog eyes. Grants plus one accuracy while on your head slot. Or plus one moxie. In your accessory slot, I could both of my both of those slots are open. Got to fill them slots. Got to fill them slots. It is yeah. sort of sailor sailory the hat. Yeah. And then oh, there's the milk soaked limb. So ah. uh, I wonder well, how, how you... you would get that if you weren't fighting him yet. Yeah, I don't. Unless he ends up no, there's no way he can end up being another one. No, right? I don't. Uh, I don't milk soaked limb, melee, two handed staff. Uh, oh, move this over here. Range, Range three. three on a critical hit with this weapon, the ruffian loses one movement. Nice. But it is a four plus two moxie. But it is a oh, it's a melee. You just plop those eyes in your own face. <laughs> yeah, it says grant plus one accuracy while you're in your, in your head, head slot. slot. So you have to yeah, you have to stick them in your eye. Well, it'd be like a third eye, but there's two third and fourth eye. Yeah. So I get one of those. Which makes me think right? of that. What was that? Um, Pan's Labyrinth, that really creepy thing that had its hands in his eyes and it did like this. There you go. I'll let you pick. Oh, the pressure. This one. What did you get? Milk soaked limb. Oh, you don't that's need, the one. Need. <laughs> wait. Oh wait, we do have one extra die face. You pick this time. <laughs> now that's just plain cheating. Okay, you pick this time. Oh my god. <laughs> Pan's Labyrinth is such a good film. I need to watch that again. Here, here's what, I'll, here's what no, we'll do. What? Here's what we'll do. You're destroying my cheating here's ability we'll here. <laughs> Oops. All right. One, two, and three. Tom, which one do you want? One, two, or three? Three. Milkman's hat, headgear, plus one moxie, plus one max hit, hit point. So I get to put that in my headgear slot. It's still cheating, but that's okay. <laughs> it's more fun. I feel that Tom needed to be, with all the time he's, he's uh, put points in, he, sh he should be included. Okay, so. we need to restore all of our stats to normal base stats. Okay. Rotate the buy and beaten order. Okay. Return to town phase. Awesome. Well, that wraps it up for today, then. Do we want to reveal who we're fighting next time? Sure. It is the abundance. The chat's doing the cheating. That's exactly the way I justify it. You want to hold that guy up? 
since oh. we were fighting next and time. I don't think I have his uh, picture yet. I don't think it's gonna... There, hold your hand up. Teamwork. There we go. This it looks like there's the little guys that are underneath some turf. I'll have him up there next week so you can get a better look at him. He was a little rough to paint. I didn't I didn't care for painting that one that much. It wasn't quite as fun. How come? I don't know, it was just sort of boring. The boring paint? It, it's not a lot to it. It's just basically a big slop of green and but you got oh, the carrot. you got the uh, there it is. We can show that. It'll be a little bit more. You can, uh... There you go. The Bundits. Yep. You want to read what the Bundits are? And they're going to be troublemaker level. And then we can uh, sort of leave everybody hanging here while we look and see who I can read. The Bundits are a motley crew of wandering Bundos. Their lair is overpopulated beyond belief and they have no choice but to expand outwards for food and shelter. Don't feel too bad for them, though. These little fellas leave nothing but ruin in their wake, tearing the countryside to bits. Bundos have shown up around U Eureka Springs before, simply to pull pranks, rob, and cause property damage to everyone's dismay. They're manageable in small numbers, but now, with the town gates wide open, the full Bundo army has shown up to claim the town as their own. And they will be troublemaker level, which means... It's bundo season. Begin the fight with the scatter action card in play. If a townsfolk enters a square adjacent to a bundo terrain piece, they immediately take one damage. Ooh. Uh, bad time to have a melee weapon? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so they apparently have their like their own terrain pieces that are going to come out. Oh, wonderful! Something. Okay. Something about that. I don't know. So we'll have to look at that card, the one that begins in play, and see what that means. Okay, so that's it for another Sunday. Uh, next week we'll be back to do this again. Yes, we will. Um, this Saturday we are streaming for our three-year anniversary of the Incorrigible Party. Yep. Uh, just chatting. Talking we have about a time whatever. For that yet? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. After Elena gets off work and has a little bit of a nappy poo. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, other than that, check out the podcast. Yep. Is that? Can't remember. It's raid exclamation point. Is that what it was? No, I, I think slash, not exclamation. Is it slash? Yeah, not exclaim. No, I don't know. What is it? I don't know. Is it is it raid exclamation point or is it slash for every go? It's definitely a slash. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. It popped up when I put it in there. We haven't done it in a couple weeks. My brain. So any anything else? If not, I will send everybody on their way over to uh, Panda Angel. Panda Angel. Everybody's yes. good. All right. Thanks for joining us. Have a great Sunday. Well, I hit it. Yeah. There we go. It just going. takes a second. It's going. Woo! <laughs> All right, let's see where's my thing. Right now, at the top. You gotta hit right now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there you go. End stream. Unless it pops up. Like that.